<laughs> Robin. Matt LeBlanc, how are you, sir? No, Matt. Welcome to the Opie and Anthony show. Before you ask, yeah, we're on the air. Yeah, we're on the air. This People is... always sit down and go, are we on the air? After like five minutes of just yapping, well, yeah. we're actually on the air. And uh, I want to start by saying this. We've all seen the new show. And we like it. We got uh, Oh, yeah? Yeah, we yeah. got the advanced copies, and the we advanced. actually did our homework and watched the show. Well, good. That's better That's, than... Uh, but you don't understand. We usually don't do that. It stinks. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't stink at all, sir. No, it's very cool. I love uh, the good inside look at uh, the the bullshit that goes on well, in we, uh, Hollywood. We, we deal yeah, with some of that right. same bullshit in radio, which well, is but different. It's such but such a lower rung. Don't even try. Yeah, I guess we can't. Why Why relate to one of the biggest fucking sitcom stars ever? <laughs> yeah, we're kind of like asshole. you, except for the money and fame yeah. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the characters in that show, the L.A casting people and no, pants on? What's, I have sweatpants come flying today okay. so I always travel he's doing with sweatpants he's a, Jimmy's a big Leno. star he's doing I'm, I'm doing so I'm shooting something for him this weekend and I go out Monday but yeah. I fly from here to Phoenix yeah and uh, I always wear sweatpants when yeah. I fly why is that more comfortable and I actually am weird because I piss so much that when I fly I always put <laughs> my asked, hands <laughs> yes I put my hands where my you uh asked. Where my band, my waistband is, so it's not pressing down on my stomach. Because when I wear a belt when I fly, I get, I've been in the bathroom every two seconds. What so it you, actually makes me pee less. Really? I put my hands up. Yeah, not on my balls, just on my uh, You my have leg. to go all the time? I'm the worst. Yeah, believe me. Patrice yeah. told me I should be checked for diabetes. <laughs> have you been? Terrible. Yes, I'm fine. Oh. I then just, then why do you like, pee a lot? I don't know. But that is why I wear sweatpants when I fly. You don't wear sweatpants, Matt? No, but I want to hang out with you more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Believe me, Jimmy is fun to hang with. <laughs> you would really have a good time with uh, Jimmy. The uh, the people in the L.A. We haven't even named the show. It's episode. Yeah, episode. On, it's on, on Showtime. Showtime. It's actually this uh, Sunday, 9.30. Starts at 9.30, right? Mm, yep, this Sunday. It's the best look at the way those behind-the-scenes people are. I mean, they were... Mm. Really funny and repulsive. <laughs> I mean, they they were really hateable and extremely accurate. It was th that that was one of my favorite parts of the show, was just showing how awful the people yeah. on the network can be. Could, well, I mean, it's you know obviously it's amplified a little bit, right? You know, but it's uh, it's an interesting look at like it's all the people that you that they've run into the pro the producers that are network people, all the people mm. that are you know and. They've uh, sort of put everyone, mixed everyone together to come up with these kind of bizarro characters. Are are there people that you definitely went, oh yeah, that is so and so from when we did Friends or what, whatever you were working on at the moment? Was it like, yeah, this is that person? No comment. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I, I yeah. see it coming a mile Perhaps, away. Perhaps I don't know. <laughs> could, I mean, could, could, could be. be. I don't want to get assassinated. Right. I'm, yeah, stuff. I'm, I'm sure there oh. were a, a, a few. Ha how do we explain the show? We should we should start there. Yeah, what well, it's um, in your words, Matt. I mean, how would you explain? It's a show episodes? about the making of a show um, that was really successful and it's a, yeah, it's a Britain. show that it's a the show is really it's it's a, it's about this British couple who are a writer producer team and they have a hit show in England and they are wooed by the American networks. One, one American network to bring their show stateside and recreate it, and they're promised the world. And one by one, every promise is broken, and <laughs> they just take it in the shorts. And then the show Perfect. becomes completely different. Yeah, and completely. Where he's now a hockey coach. I, I think we can yeah, say that, right? About, yeah, it's about the head. Ma the show originally is about the headmaster of an elite boys' academy, who's hopeless, hopelessly in love with a middle-aged lesbian. And when they bring it to the States, the network wants to fire that guy, played by Richard Griffiths, and replace him with me. So I play myself, Matt LeBlanc, or a version of myself. I mean, it's not really a documentary. It's this, yeah. like, scripted version of myself. And uh, since I'm not really old enough to play or I don't look right to play the uh, headmaster we change it to a uh, coach and then it becomes a hockey coach <laughs> and then the so lesbian good. we change her to be straight so that there's room for something down the line and just kind of meddle with their show and water it down and water it down and water it down and water it down. And the writer-producer team, you know, are not happy, obviously. They took, yeah. They, they took their little baby very seriously and hate that it's being chopped apart and changed into something and different. It's, it's absolutely what happens, though. I mean, you, you've had to have seen that happen uh, during your career. 
Uh, well, I mean, you know, it's sort of a play. You know, there's a lot like The Office and I think Shameless, another show that comes on right after us, is actually ba based on a show that was a hit in London. Um, you know, it seems to be a trend. Shows yeah, coming yeah. from overseas over here getting remade and put back on the put back on the air. But um, my show is is really interesting. The writing I think is really good. It's really sharp and smart. It's David Crane and Jeffrey Cleric and. Uh, David was the head writer on Friends, so you know he he called me up and he said, "Hey, we we have an idea," and I said, "Oh, okay." I was just you know I was sitting on the couch doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so what the hell? Why yeah, not? I love how you are on the show though because it's like. The, you know, leading men in the shows are always made out. The, the obsession with likable, and they talk about likable, which is just a word you learn to hate. Mm -hmm. And uh, you do some things that make you, you're like a really complete person in the show. It's like, there are times where you're like a really nice guy and compassionate, and they show the humanity of, you know, being divorced and all this stuff. And then there's a couple things you do that are just scumbag moves. <laughs> and it's great. It's like, that's what a complete person is. It's like, they don't, they don't take away that part of your personality or of your character to make you more likable. And it was also really fun to sort of take pot shots at myself, you know, make fun of the whole friend's fame. Mm -hmm. it, it, it was it was fun. And, and I got to say, I don't know that I would have been so up for it had it not been in the hands of these two guys writing it. You know, right. they were there for the whole friend's thing. So it was like, if I'm going to make fun of myself, I, I felt really in good hands with them doing it. And it, and it was, uh, they're really clever and sharp, and it was fun. With that said, um, did you really have a cologne out? No, we never had a Okay, because <laughs> that's part of uh, some of the future uh, episodes down the line, where he makes fun of uh, cologne that he that was, out. That was one of my favorite lines in the thing, where, where I think the woman goes, yeah, well, catchphrase is kind of like, eh, and you're like, yeah, well, tell it to my house in Malibu. <laughs> and it's like, it really is easy line. to shit on something, but it's like, you know. Right, it bought me a house. One of the most successful shows of all time. Yeah. Do you admit, when you come off a show like of that magnitude, which is it, it is one of the biggest ever, what is what is the process you go through? Like, okay, I want to take a little bit of time off, or I want to get right back into it, or I'm only going to be seen as this guy. I mean, well, for me, I went straight into doing Joey for two years, and you know that was uh, um, less than spectacular experience. <laughs> I mean, it, it was it was it was actually really interesting because it's on the same we had the same stage, same crew, and it just wasn't. The writing wasn't there. Do you that, think people missed the other characters? I don't know if it was that. I think it just, you know, the stories we told on Joey were, I think, maybe in the wrong direction. You know, um, I think one thing that, with it, that hampered the show was to have the, ne the nephew... When to to saddle Joey with a nephew so that he had to be a role model, really sort of handcuff the character because I wanted to see Joey in L.A. You know, at the Playboy Mansion or drinking a beer on the Hollywood sign mm -hmm. or going out, all this fun stuff he wanted to see. And because he had to be a role model and set an example for his nephew, Ugh. it kind of handcuffed the character in a way. You must and love him a little bit. Yeah, you must love the fact though that that with this show you're able to uh, break away from that uh, kind of role models, squeaky clean kind of. Yeah, it's not the sort of network. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not selling. <laughs> yeah. I'm not selling you know cars and diapers anymore. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, swearing and talking about lesbians and. Yeah, fun. I mean that because uh, <laughs> obviously you got to be afraid. There's got to be, it's the double-edged sword thing with uh, being on a hit show like that. Uh, the typecasting, the thing, oh, people will just say this, or, you know, they'll say, uh, here's this character, and that's who we'll always be. So it must be nice to break out of that. And uh, Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, typecasting, if you really want to get to the bottom of it, look, everybody's just like a squirrel trying to get a nut, trying to make money. If you can make money in this world, you make money in this mm -hmm. world. Whether yeah. it's typecast or not, who really gives a shit? You know what yep. I mean? So I, I don't really have that big of a problem with it. No, see, that's good. Yeah, Spock <laughs> had a problem with it a few years ago. But this is did great, he? though. Because, <laughs> yeah, he wrote he? a book called I Am Not Spock. <laughs> like, shut up, yes, you are. I know, well, then get one <laughs> fucking thing solved and in search of it. We won't think of you as Spock. What a cock tease that show was. <laughs>
It's really the big, the biggest questions ever, and they had less answers than I did. I was eleven. <laughs> like Monster Quest is the new one, like that. Have you seen that? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, it's they like all oh, the find, Loch Ness monster. They never they, find Bigfoot. Bigfoot's right. never there. <laughs> The whole show is in the is in the commercial for each episode. You yeah, know? yeah. That okay, was I'm gonna watch it. it. Sounds like they found Bigfoot this week. I think they found him. Yeah. All those dumb ghost hunter shows, and they show people go, "What's that?" Huh? And it's it's the night vision camera. And then if you ever watch the show, you realize the guy's like, "What's that?" It's me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so there's nothing going on there. They've all admitted their hoaxes. The Bigfoot, uh, the Loch Ness monster, that famous photo of Nessie coming out of the water was like a, the surgeon's photo was, was hoax. They're all hoaxes. Every one of them. What did you think? There was a real monster? Yeah, well, I don't know. Oh, enough people saw it. <laughs> yeah, of course they did. You're yeah, ass. you like to think, right? Yeah, you dream. That's what you look forward to. <laughs> There's something in there. <laughs> How great was it to... Uh, some some of the lines in this were so... Can we can we talk about our favorite scene? Because it's in the first episode, I believe. Uh, okay. Where the English guy had a freaking uh, audition for his own part. Oh, that, that, that is was, some, um, That's an amazing scene. It's extraordinarily uncomfortable. <laughs> because you're watching these people watch this great actor... That's part of the big himself. hit when it was in Europe. Yeah. So or your favorite Britain. scene is one that I'm not in. Just. Clap, clap. <laughs> that's cool. I can talk about a few. <laughs> that's wonderful. Uh, I said one of them. I didn't say, or did I say favorite? I, I'll if be on favorite. I'm fucked. Said the best scene ever, 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 yeah, ever, ever I done. Was, I think it was ever filmed. Ever filmed. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I think that some. It was very politically incorrect too. Like the show really did some fucking impolite stuff, which was great. And I, I won't say what episode it was or what happens, but there's one s scene where they're at a, a benefit for rape victims. And yeah. some of the dialogue in that and the way you're just Brutal. fucking, you're yapping while she's talking up there about her rape and he's fucking talking and well, popping a wine bottle. It's a, rape, it's a rape benefit. It's a benefit for rape with a wine tasting involved. <laughs> that alone is just a little tacky. <laughs> and they got a gift uh, bag after the yeah. thing. Yeah. Gift bag. And, and, and what was in it again? There was a, bottom, a bottle of Merlot, right. a corkscrew, and a rape whistle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And they're, they're, not, was, they're not being politically correct. <laughs> dude, and they can know. never be accused of making uh, fun of rape at all. because, But it's like just the context of it. Like, right, yeah, yeah. The opening, like they're, they're all sitting at the table and... and, and and Matt's there with the, and there's the bottle in front of him, and you just hear the woman go, and he struck me with a piece of pipe. And then he just starts talking to his friends and fucking. Yeah. He can't it's wait to so open up great. his bottle of wine. See, he's a pilot with her once. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, you're saying what a shitty actress she was. Yeah. Not a good actress. Yeah. Yeah. I think she does voiceovers yeah. for like cartoons and shit. That's hysterical. Uh, it was such a, a like a genuine uncomfortable thing to watch. Yeah. How could anybody discuss this while she's we talking pitched, about her rape? It's funny because when we were shooting that scene, we pitched. Uh, a lot of different jokes for the, you know, it was funny things come in threes, right? So it was, I did a pilot with her once, not a good actress. I think she does voiceover now for cartoons <laughs> and shit. So, but that third line, we pitched all different kinds of stuff. It was, some, some, some probably the, didn't squeak through. Was, yeah, was <laughs> all of them. A little, a little too raunchy. Yeah. <laughs> even for showtime. Standards and practices were like, uh, you know, we don't have advertisers, but. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. still want to stay on the Yeah, air. we still read emails and letters <laughs> from people who give us death threats. <laughs> you have to be very happy with, with the way this came out. I mean, I, I really, I, I had some know. genuine fucking out loud laughs alone, which is really hard to do when you're watching six, seven episodes in a row. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks. Yeah. And you know, I am really proud of it. it. It there's seven episodes, and it really builds to a nice um, finale at the end. Absolutely. I, I don't know if you guys have yeah, seen yeah. all oh, right seven. to the end. Yeah. Can I can I tell everyone what happened? Uh, no. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. <laughs> no. Because it's oh, so God. good. I just oh, gotta, gotta tell be people. Uncomfortable guy. But it's nice how you know you have these three characters don't that are, and you sort of watch you watch their marriage kind of go downhill and. Yeah. It's like it's about this couple that are at that age where they should be having kids, but they don't have kids. So the show is like their baby, their show in England, and they bring it here, and their child is in jeopardy. And I come in and I sort of represent the, if you will, the big evil world that presents danger to their child and kind of, you know, sneak my way in and 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 uh, put their child in danger. And and at the end, it. It really is. You find yourself kind of caring about these characters that you th you think, oh wait, I, I don't, 
I don't care about these people. I, well, I guess I do. Yeah. I kind of <laughs> do. When did that happen? You know, and it, it kind of sneaks up on you. I'll, I was surprised where it went. I'll just say that. I was oh, very really? surprised with certain things that happened as the episodes went on. I was like, wow. I, I, you think they're not going to do something because, again, it makes him I, less likable or makes them someone less likable. It was, I was very happy that it went where it went. I'll, I'll tell you this much. The last scene, so uncomfortable and so funny at the same time. And it was from you, sir. So there you go. <laughs> the opening scene—it was—it was—it was, it was, it was, it was fucking perfect, though, man. The, like, mi- yeah. the minute he walks in, <laughs> I, I want to say it so bad, but it sets up for a second season, that's for sure. Yeah. The minute he walks in, it's every humiliation every one of us have ever had with a celebrity. It's like they're all expecting this big... The, the, the network is like, well, Matt's dying. He loves the project. And so he walks in, he's on his cell phone talking to these people who are building him a restaurant, and he's like, so I'm here, why? And you just realize they have to pitch him the show, and they don't want to pitch him the show. And it's every embarrassment every one of us have ever yeah. felt about being around a celebrity, yeah. There's a great joke in that scene, too, because they, they, they were told that I saw their show while I was in London shooting a movie. And so they say, uh, did you just do a movie in London? And I say, no. And they say, so you're not a big fan? And I go, of London? Eh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, of us. Oh, you guys, no. <laughs> but then don't you start shitting on the show and comparing it with something and making some comparison to another show that they hate? It's a really a very yeah. uncomfortable, unpleasant exchange. But right out of the gate, you fucking come off as really unpleasant, which hooked me in to wanting to watch the show. It's like he's not being the, you know, the uh, adorable, uh, right. fun movie star guy. Yeah, we that was... I like that aspect of it too. Right off, the, right out of the gate, mm. it's like, oh, he's kind of an asshole. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How much have they offered you guys for a, a reunion show, uh, friends? <laughs> uh, you know, I don't. I have anyone no idea. come through? The rumor's been going around for a while now, and I can, I could tell you right now that uh, I spoke directly to David Crane about it, and I don't. It's not happening. It's, it's not, not happening. It's not yeah, happening. Yeah. It never was happening. I don't know where that rumor came from, but it's. it's you bump happening. into each other every if so often. If it is happening, it's happening without me, and I'll be fucking pissed. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be the guy on the phone. It's like, hey, everyone, it's Joey. He's exactly. calling from Paris. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it always yeah. Paris? It's somewhere where Those they can have a camera. Right. That's <laughs> terrible. Did you see? Uh, we we also love. Uh, the comeback that Lisa Kudrow did. The comeback. Fuck, did you yeah. see? Did you see those episodes? Or I any did. Of it? I did see that. It's great, For me, right? That was hard to watch because Lisa is like a. You know, we were all like brothers and sisters. You know, we all really cared about each other, and to watch her play a character who never won. You know, right, that, that was extremely she never uncomfortable. I, I wanted to see every episode. I wanted to see her score. She's great in it, and I thought it was a really well done show. Mm-hmm. And she was played the part beautifully. But I was so rooted for her to win, and it was really hard. And you know, it's hard when you know someone to watch them do something. And you know what I mean? I care so much about her. It was really hard for me to watch that show. There was so many Which humiliations. Is a testament to how good the show right. was. You know, because yeah. I, mean? I I bought it. I bought it full bore. Did I never f- met her, and it was hard to watch. It was just un- you, this, this so nice woman trying so hard to be liked and succeed, and all these little things in your home cringing. For, if, anytime a show can make you go like, oh. Fuck. Did you feel that way watching uh, David Schwimmer and Band of Brothers? <laughs> we could, he, he was, was good in that. No, <laughs> no, I mean he was good in that, but it was like it was like he was just such an ass in it. Yeah. And you're like, oh, oh, this is well, painful. That's, you know, he's an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm having dinner with him tonight, so I hope he's listening. Oh, are you? <laughs> you still do like bump into those guys and uh, yeah, I see, hang out every I, so I've often. I've actually seen Schwimmer quite a bit lately. He's yeah. uh, married now and he's having a baby and. He's uh, he's a good guy. He's directing. He's he's doing good. Yeah. Uh, Matthew's got a new show. You just laugh and throw hundreds around. <laughs> Thousands. <laughs> Thousands. Yeah, yeah, what what's am I wrong talking about? about? Is it, Look is, at me. Is it hard? Oh, yeah. Is it hard when you're when you guys are all on the show together, and you see like whether, you know Jennifer Aniston doing a movie or somebody else doing a, something? A movie? How about ten a year? But I'm saying like every time it comes up, do you ever feel like you're like? Is there any? Uh, it's hard to watch that because I see people with things I've done moving on to something else. And there's a slight bit of, yeah, what, wanting to be jealousy? a part of it. <laughs> not, even, not even jealousy. Cause he, no, I'm sure I think, like, wow, she's got to get up early and go do radio interviews for that. <laughs> <laughs> While I'm laying in bed going. <sighs> <sighs> yeah. So you don't feel any, like, desire to be a I'm part? I'm happy for her. Yeah, no, no, it's not a, it's not a race. I don't, I'm never, I don't look at it like that. It was never, 
you know, a competition, in my opinion, between any of us. And God bless her. God bless, you know, anyone that can work as much as they want to, you know. And yeah. It doesn't bother me. Yeah, and it's, it's never a feeling of, like, bad for the, the other person. But sometimes it's just like, ah, oh, man, I, I, I feel like I'm... <laughs> And I just feel like I'm getting left behind, and I feel like oh, that a lot. But again, I was not—I was not one of the biggest shows in history either. <laughs> it, I guess it's yeah. a little bit different when oh. you've got that resume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, no, I don't. Uh, I don't feel that way at all. You should talk to a shrink or something. Oh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, he does. <laughs> Once a he week. Does. Yes, I think not she's enough. technically a, a social worker. <laughs> she's lovely. We're getting to the bottom of a lot of things. <laughs> oh, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Why do I lose my erections if there's no shame? You know, things like that. <laughs> sure, sure. Do you, uh, was there certain uh, personality traits or whatever? There's one trait in there that you that you have as a character, which is very funny, and it's what every guy would give himself. Yeah. Uh, I had nothing to do with it. You know, you, you, didn't, you didn't pitch that in the writer's meeting? No, they, like, you know. they, called me, they called me up and they said, we want to give you a huge dick in the show. And I said, all right. <laughs> what are you going to say to that? that? Yeah. Who's no? going to argue that one? No, 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 no. Make me hung like a field mouse. <laughs> you don't want to. You don't want to have that false advertising thing though, where it gets talked up too much, and then yeah. when well, in real yeah, life I mean, you're kind of like, ah. You yeah. Know. Look, for the record, I'm completely normal proportion guy. I mean, that, uh, see, there you go. And it's got a huge hog. No, see, that's that's, <laughs> that's what people say. That's bad. That's you can't been bad say for that. you. No, it hasn't been bad, but believe me. <laughs> there you go. But no, it's it's just one of those things that it's like you don't want the expectation to be so much that the reality isn't you know yeah. doesn't live up to the. Uh, but you remember, you got to put in the extra work. You know, mine's big enough. Gets That's, me off every it time. It does the job. <laughs> Gets me off every time. <laughs> She's shaking her head in the in the corner. Ah, Slow great. down, man. Slow down. Ah, that's great. <laughs> right. No, it's but it's, you always remember that stuff when you hear rumors about a guy's hog. Like I've heard uh, James Woods, Chaplin. You remember that Leno. stuff. I heard Leno too. Yeah, I heard he's packing a monster. And I, every time I see him, that's all I think of. I just want to ask Why don't you. No, yeah. Did you hear that? Milton yeah, Burrell. Milton Burrell. Howard, did you hear that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, yeah, that was uh, obviously years out, ago. I'll pull out just enough to beat you. Just enough to beat you. <laughs> a great I, line, I man. Pull, I was driving to work. I had to pull over. <laughs> that was a great one of the line, funniest man. things I've ever heard. That's a just great Just enough one. to beat you. Especially from such a little twerp like Milton Burrell. Like you would never expect it from yeah. this little, you know, vaudeville-type comic. It, it, that's not the guys you expect. But he didn't to want to talk about it. He yeah. kept Howard kept badgering him, badgering yep. him. He was like, no, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Finally. Forrest right. Tucker was supposed to have a big one, too. Who's Forrest Tucker? He's the guy from F Troop. The other guy. The uh, straight man. Oh, I don't know Not who that Egg is. Arn. Oh, sorry. Well, I you're going back into obscure people. When I was yeah, I heard the guy that produced the Honeymooners. <laughs> <laughs> Legendary. <laughs> was, was, were there any scenes that you wanted to do for this? Like, I know you said there were certain jokes you wanted to do. Were there any scenes that you wanted to do that they're like, eh, that's going to kind of, that's going to... That's going to hurt you on the show. That's going to make people not like you. Do they throw any of that likability stuff at you or no? No, you know, I got to say, in terms of showrunners, we got two really, really, really smart guys. David and Jeffrey really crafted the thing very well. And, you know, there would be joke, certain pitches. I would pitch jokes here and there, and sometimes they would get in, and sometimes they wouldn't. And that's. But for the most part, it was them writing the whole thing, and they, it was really their doing, and uh, uh, everyone felt like we were in really good hands. It's got to be nice to be in a place where you can just kind of, you can kind of, at, at this place. Well, in your also, you know, I had this, like, relationship with David. I worked for him for 10 years, my right. friends. So, and that show was fairly successful. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, when he has an idea you kind of you tend not to second guess it so it's really nice to be involved with something where you, you have this blind faith and you know you're in good hands and he gives you a note and says try it a little more this way and you don't you don't then go in your own head and go oh, well if i do do it that way do i need to worry but you don't have any of that mm. there's no inner monologue going on you just commit and go for it and it what was, do you do when that does happen though when you're working with somebody and you're just kind of like oh, come you, on, I you can second guess it and you kind of go is that really the best way to do it and you and then you it, it fucks with your head you know you get in your head and you do you try to diplomatically say like i i think i could do this yeah. this way well they still you know it's like a, they'll say well just let's just try one that way 
And you yeah. say, all right, yeah, we'll try one. And that's the one that ends up yeah. in the movie. Well, for safety. Yeah, I like good the for one safety. for safety. Yeah. is the best one. For all right, yeah. no, that was all good. We're just going to do it one more time. And you like how oh. it's written, please? Oh, this is the one that you're going to use because, yeah, yeah, the other ones were good. Some of the best direction <laughs> I ever got, I was doing an episode of Louis' show, and I did a line. He goes, all right, I want your motivation to be something other than it's just your next line to say. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, he gave he me a beating. talk to you like that, well, which my is friend, hysterical. Yeah, but, oh, he fucking clubbed me good. <laughs> I deserved it. <laughs> They're just waiting for your next line. <laughs> yeah. Um, You're staring at the person waiting for your cue. Yeah, I think it was actually, one thing he would do during, fuck Louis, one thing he would do during Lucky Louis, he would actually move his lips at times when somebody else no, was talking. No, I've seen that I, on shows when people I don't are, know if you could catch it. Like, yeah. we would catch it in rehearsal once in a while, like somebody else would, because he wrote all of it. So, I used to do that. I'm notorious for that. Really? really? Mouthing other people's well, lines? I know, I, you know, I, in the process of learning my lines, I learn everybody's lines. Yeah, you know yeah. What I mean? So Jennifer Aniston used to get on me all the time. She used to get, Maddie, Jesus Christ. Christ, you gotta stop. What are you doing? <laughs> You're saying my lines as I'm saying them. Am I really? I wasn't aware of it. Yeah. <laughs> Lips moving. Stop. You gotta stop. Sorry. If so people notice that at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll look for that now. Are you better? Are you, are you like a better first take guy? Or are you one of those guys like 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 Brando used to have cards all over the place so he wouldn't know the lines? Or are you like three or four takes in is when you start to do I think degrade. first take. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ed Wood. Damn, nice. yeah, we got an Edward guy. What's yeah, your greatest well. fear as an actor? Like, uh, I mean, for me, it's like this is so stupid. I always have trouble acting mm -hmm. when I'm standing. Cause I really don't. I always tell actors this, but I don't know what to do with my hands when it's I act. Those hands I really don't. They're torture. I either over gesticulate like that and look stupid, or, or I just stiff. or stiff, stiff. arm. <laughs> like, what's a hard scene for you to do, or, or something that you've like historically have had trouble with? Um, you know, it's, that's a good question. A lot of people say comedy is really hard. For me, comedy's easy. The thing that's hard for me is, um, like, if it's something, you know, as an actor, you use emotional memory. Like, if you need to be really upset, so you imagine, like, your mom dying or something. Whenever I have to sort of substitute something in my own life to get emotionally to a place I need to be, that's really hard for me. Because I don't like to, you know, I don't like to... To reg up things? Yeah, it's like, oh, I don't want to think about that. Or Not yet, my right. dog died when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta be I, you know, sad. It's like, fuck that, let's yeah. tell jokes. <laughs> Is that like method acting, though? Would you consider yourself more of a method actor? Is that what that is, where you kind of get into... Uh, I guess that's you know for me acting is it's just make you just pretend <laughs> make believe yeah it's like a license to not ever have to grow up just make believe right. make believe you're getting shot make We're believe you're <laughs> falling off the building make believe you're in love make believe you hate that person <laughs> Right? It's, yeah. it's, it's all fake. Great gig. Yeah, they always tell me, yeah. make believe you can act. <laughs> I just yeah, fucking that, mumble through it. Believe, make believe you're good well, at it. <laughs> we're, uh, we're being told Matt's got to get out of here. He's a, a He's really a busy, busy man. man. Yeah. But we loved it, man. Uh, well, Showtime. Thanks, guys. Episodes yeah. premieres this Sunday at 9.30 on Showtime. Yeah, check it out. Very funny, yeah, man. So and uh, okay, it, cool. it's a great story. It's got a great story arc, and um, I suggest it highly. I, I had some tremendous laughs in this. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it if I didn't like it, but I wouldn't lie to you and tell you it was, it was great because it comes off at, at after at the end of watching all seven, you left with this feeling of like it's smart, it's funny, and it's like really racy and raunchy and mm -hmm. stuff. But there's not one piece of nudity in it right if you think about it there's not one well we'd like to see the blondes uh tits sure Let's be honest. Well, well, you see a little, little the top a little bit you see, you see nothing <laughs> well in the porno video that she shot oh, yeah, oh that's that right was, that was shot perfectly <laughs> yeah. Yeah. she brought she that in her from in. home <laughs> she just brought it in <laughs> all right thanks Matt, a lot we gotta get you out of here right. matt leblanc yeah. everyone thanks you guys